I just want to very. I know that some of you've been here a few times, but just quick a quick sort of recap, uh, a little bit on my story, because a lot of newcomers, and with a little bit of a focus on the, on the Course in Miracles, and also one of my spiritual teachers, Dr. David R. Hawkins. So, um, yeah, for the newcomers, um, yeah, at the age of 30, I was working in the stock market and um, not interested in spirituality at all uh, and was very much uh, also having several addictions. You know, there, were, there was um, food addiction, there was workaholisms, uh, the, you know, there was dishonesty, there, there was, um, you know, other addictions as well with the opposite sex. So lots of these addictions running around. And um, suddenly I got kidney failure. I think it was meant to be at exactly the age of 30. Suddenly in the Royal Free Hospital facing death, doctors sort of saying, we don't know what to do to keep you alive. Had this very sort of strange, lost 70% of my kidney function in, one, in 24 hours, hurtling towards death. And then, um, in, as I suddenly realized I was facing death, I can only describe what I must have happened is I surrendered, you know, I'm not facing death. And I had a, a heavenly, timeless spiritual experience come upon me. I actually heard a voice say, find a spiritual solution. And it was a transformative experience. Then uh, that led me, I won't go into it, onto going to every kind of spiritual group you can imagine in London. I won't go into it right now. But in one of those groups, I had a mentor, and he introduced me to two spiritual teachers. Uh, one of them was Dr. David R. Hawkins, um, and one of them was Muji. Uh, Muji, uh, I went on, I'll talk about him a bit later on. Uh, he does a process called the, uh, it's called self-inquiry, but I, you could call it the observer. I call it, it's a sort of more user-friendly name for it, being in the witnesser or the observer. And also Dr. Hawkins. Now, Dr. Hawkins, some of you may be familiar with 12-step groups. Dr. David R. Hawkins is one of Bill Wilson's sponsees. Um, so anyone who's familiar, who goes to a 12-step group, uh, yeah, Dr. Hawkins was one of uh, Bill Wilson's sponsees, but he went on and studied A Course in Miracles and was A Course in Miracles teacher and also he went on to become a teacher of enlightenment himself and um, uh, has written many books. But um, one of the things, apart from um, you know, I had addictions and he recommended 12-step groups and, and they were very good for that. But of course in Miracles is a mystical teaching or a, a teaching for reaching enlightenment. But paradoxically in doing the Course in I, I won't go into it too much now, doing a Course in Miracles, he let go of 23 illnesses, many of them life-threatening, he had things like heart failure, uh, uh, you know, uh, various infections and various things, and all 23 illnesses left as he did these mystical teachings, which is essentially, uh, enlightenment to mysticism is aiming at the complete death of the ego, transcending the ego to experience um, um, uh, God consciousness. Um, an example of a Christian mystic would be uh, someone like St. Francis, you know, and one of the famous quotes of St. Francis is, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. That's a very famous quote, and that, that, that would only come out of the mouth of a mystic. So prior to the, prior to the thinking, before the thinking, uh, is, 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 the, is you know, where I will experience God consciousness. So, the, you know, so one way could see, one, one of the tools you can do is to, be, is to practice being the detached witnesser of thoughts. And this enables one to experience um, the eternal or the limitless, or the timeless, or the holiness, or the presence of God, you know, from a Christian reference point of view. Or I could say, it's in the death of the ego that one is born to eternal life. What does that mean? Uh, in practical terms, through, through uh, all the years of work I've done and studied with enlightened teachers, is that the ego is like an addiction. The ego is like an addiction. It's just the... Con it's the consistent identification with thoughts. Consistent identification with thoughts. Consistent identification with thoughts. I mean, there's a, little, a bit more to it, but that's one of the main 
you could say what what are the resistances to experiencing God consciousness or enlightenment or uh, the the witnessing state. So if you're like if your thoughts are crossing your mind and you're constantly like identified with them, interested or hooked into them, then your source of referencing becomes a self-center. You know, you're identified with your thoughts. You're also identified strongly with the body. So uh, we'll be going into this a bit later with the uh, enlightenment exercises, self-inquiry exercises. But you know, to the eternal is limitless, it's whole, it's oneness. So you must let go. the ego is the experience of feeling limited or having a self-center as an experience of self. Okay? So anything that the ego, the ego is the identification with the limited, you see. So anything that is limited, if you experience limitation in this moment, you, you are identified with ego. You're not in the limitless, you're not experiencing oneness, you're not exp experiencing wholeness, you're not experiencing the eternal, you're not experiencing the timeless, you're experiencing limits, you're experiencing a self-centre, you're experiencing in this moment is of a self-centre, you're not experiencing oneness or the limitlessness or the eternal. So that is the ego. Enlightenment or the mystics uh, are to are the death transcending the ego, the death of the ego, to experience that which is limitless, whole, one, and timeless. And we'll be going through that. And this is not, you know, we'll be going through the exercise. Not just this is just me mental theory. We'll be going through it as an experience. You know, I was speaking to someone earlier. The difference between intellectual belief systems and constructs and actually having a spiritual experience that one can reference to. Okay, so if you if you are identified with the body, you experience a limit, and you also experience a location. Yeah, if you if you are identified with your thoughts, you experience yourself as your thinking. You know, in a, in a center. Okay, so there is one other aspect. There is one other aspect to the ego. So throughout life, if you are constantly in your thoughts, you are actually numbing out from the eternal. You're a res it's a resistance to experiencing the eternal presence now. But also, the ego likes to do things. It can go into food addiction, it can go into alcoholism, it can go into TV addiction. It can do various things, and this leads to um, repressed or suppressed emotions. So, now, now Hawkins did a lot of research. Um, some of you may, I won't go into too much, uh, into muscle testing or kinesiology but uh, uh, maybe, maybe another day. But um, we can verify things spiritually through muscle testing or kinesiology. And he did a lot of research. So now I would have said, you know, and Hawkins did some research, but, you know, if you've got, if you've got a really inflated ego, what's the experience? Like I had, um, now I'm going, to, I'm going to relate this to health problems, but it's all related to how inflated your ego is as to what you experience. You know how you experience the world, how life is experienced based on how inflated your ego is. So, I was a food addict. I was a workaholic. I was constantly thinking non-stop. I was a control freak. All of those things, which means that um, you know, it, well, it led me to the gates of death. That's how that you know to be disconnected. The more disconnected you are from the, the eternal presence of God, that God consciousness, that Christ consciousness or the eternal presence, the more disconnected you are, it's like, it's an anti-life thing. So I was, in, I was in active addictions, which addictions are just unconsciously, how can I commit suicide through my, through my addictions? You know, can I kill myself with food? Can I kill myself with work? Can I kill myself with relationships by choosing the worst type of relationships? <laughs> you know? So they, they are this thing, they create, an experience and you're attracted to things which correlate to that level of disconnection from God. So when I had, I was repressing my emotions, I was accumulating, if you can imagine it, lots of repressed emotions, lots of repressed guilt, shame, anger, fear and pride. So that, all of those repressed emotions were in my ego, I can't, I can't, you know, and 
my thoughts were going, I had all these limiting belief systems, you know, and I had a lot of unconscious guilt because I was killing myself, I was being dishonest, I was harming others, I was not being, you know, when you're in that self-centered state and you're disconnected from the grace, you automatically are, you're automatically so disconnected, you feel very, you feel like full of fear, you feel very limited, you have these extreme addictions, and you're also and you're also in a kind of a magnetic attractor field, where you're being run by these levels of consciousness. And I'm sort of picking up thoughts, like Jung talked about the collective. You know, I was picking up thoughts on radio ad addict FM. You know, how can I be a good food addict and destroy myself? How can I be a good workaholic? You know, and destroy myself. How can I be? How can I destroy myself through relationships? So I was like attracting. I was on this, this frequency, this vibration, this ego frequency. So then face death, then you have spiritual experience, and then you start to, you know, as you start to do spiritual work, you know, like I had, you know, I, I would say, and some of you may not be familiar with this, but, you know, a really good place if you're in addictions to, if you're in alcohol addiction, food addiction, sex and love addiction, gambling, whatever it is, is to do a 12-step group. They give you what I call the the, the basics of spirituality, you know, like the you know the O levels. I call them the O levels, you know, mm. O level spirituality. Yeah. When you get to like a, a course in miracles, after you've done your O levels, this is more towards a mysticism, which is complete. How to completely uh, let go of your ego to experience that timeless, eternal presence, you know, to experience oneness. How do you let go? of the ego 100% to experience that, that, that oneness within. It's mystical teaching or enlightened teachers or mystics like St. Francis. I like Dr. Hawkins' teachings. I like Moody's teachings. So, okay, but as you, as you connect to this infinite source by letting go of your, and we'll be, we'll be doing two exercises later today. One will be how to feel feelings out, how to let go of all those repressed emotions that are accumulated within the ego through, you know, food addiction, workalism, TV. Also, if you're getting negative dialogue, like I haven't had a productive day, or a bad me, or I should have earned more, I should be more amazing than what I'm doing, I'm doing. You know, like, but these are, at each level, as you let go of more stuff, you go into a different level of consciousness. You're on a different vibratory. The more you let go of your ego, you, experience, you start to let go of experience, you, your experience of self starts to become less and less limited. You know, when I was, when I was, uh, this will make sense for what people have done. I, I think a lot of people here have done a lot of spiritual work. When I was in my, uh, the depths of my illness, I, I really felt like I was in my body. I really felt my body really strongly, all the fear, the pains, the agony. I felt very contracted. My head was going at 100 miles an hour. That's like what it's like to be to be have a really inflated ego, lots of uh, addiction going on. As you start to do spiritual work, and you let go of your identification, uh, with you, you let go of all of your repressed emotions, start forgiving people, start doing meditation exercises, praying, all of that stuff, of course, in miracles, or doing the teachers from uh, and the enlightened teachers, like being the detached witnesser of thoughts, then. You know, you start to identify with the body less and less. You start to identify, identify with your thoughts less and less. So your experience of self starts to become more limitless. You start to be less identified with your body, less identified with your thoughts. You start to feel more limitless, expansive, more timeless. And we'll be going through that uh, a bit later. But also, um, here's the thing with illness. Sorry, I, I do tend to waffle sometimes when I start, but there's lots of newcomers today. So I had kidney failure, I was on a dialysis machine, I had asthma, I had, uh, I know we're going on about, about health, asthma, gout, gout attacks, horrible gout attacks, I had to use walking sticks. So, now as you let go of your repressed emotions and feelings, um, what happens is when, when you become, when your ego becomes very inflated, um, you have a lot of guilt and shame, some of the strong emotions. So you automatically attract illnesses which correlate to how much guilt and shame and negativity you're holding. So if I'm like, you know, more or less killing myself, 
as being dishonest in the stock market, people are losing money. Uh, when you have that much guilt and shame, you attract illnesses which reflect the severity of your disconnection. Mm -hmm. So when I have... Um, we're, we're on camera, is that okay? Yeah. Okay, let, let yeah. You, I was going to say, um, yeah. uh, why does it appear that there are people who are breaking the rules all the time, seem to be doing very well for themselves? <laughs> you know, the, the, you know this, how, how do they get punished? Okay, so he, here's, here's, here's the thing uh, with that. Actually, with kinesiology, it did come out that uh, there are uh, past lives. Past lives do exist. So when, um, when you get hit with stuff um, uh, is in correlation with what I would call universal law. So you don't know when you're going to, when you're going to get hit with the stuff that you do. So as you sow, so shall you reap. But when you reap is, um, is, is, is up to divinity. So it's like I, I could be, you know, I can be, I could, I, I mean, I'm not an alcoholic. I wasn't a burglar or anything. But, you, you know, it's not like, you know, some people go longer, some people go shorter. But eventually, if you do, um, if you do things, it eventually gets you. Now, I mean, everyone will say, well, this person's, you know, this person did this for so long, this person did it for things. You can't, you know, it, not, see, we say that divinity is omniscient, omnipotent and omnipresent, meaning that um, if you like, the, the wisdom of the universe, when, peop when and how is not up, you know, you as an ego can't see when and how that's going to happen. But it does happen. I mean, it's, it's um, so some people will go longer, some people will seemingly go shorter, but, the, you know, the way I sort of see it is like there's so, you know, there's so many factors, and only, you know, God is God, so when it happens is when it happens. But it's not like, you know, I don't, you know, my view is that, um, uh, I also believe in past lives, everything comes back eventually. Um, yeah, that, that's how I'd answer that question. I can believe that, you know. Um, so, I also believe that, um, um, you know, like in, uh, you could say, my own, this is my take, take it or leave it, no, nothing in here you need to take on board. Like you could say that the more spiritual work you do, you, you know, your, it's like your spirit gets more clear of the baggage in this lifetime. So, you know, in what condition, you, you know, the, the, you leave this body, you know, the, you could say the buoyancy of the spirit, depending on the amount of spiritual work you do, will be an effect of what, ha what happens to the spirit as it leaves the physical body, the vehicle. So that for me, there is no seeming getting away with anything, Could you know. Could you say that again? <laughs> the spirit and the body. Thing. Yes, so, like, uh, uh, I think it's, it, it's not too far to say, I mean, it's quite common nowadays, out-of-body experiences, people floating up out of their body during an operation and knowing what's going on. I think it's quite well known. So, so we can relatively safely say, I'm, I'm a hypnotherapist, you know, there's a lot of past life uh, research that's been done. So, but, so, if I, even if, let's say the hypothetical, we shouldn't talk in hypotheticals, let, let's say, you know, I'm a mass murderer, <laughs> you know, and I've spent the first, I don't know, 48 years of my life sort of happily murdering people. I don't know where this comes out of, but anyway. Uh, and then I die, suddenly a car hits me. And someone says, well, he didn't, get, he didn't get his dues. You know, he spent his whole life being bad. But, you know, for me it's like, <coughs> if I spent my whole life being bad and seemed seemingly like, oh, and he got away with it, you know, nothing happened to him. And that person was, uh, you know, helping old ladies across the road the whole day, whole life, and then they got run over by a bus and they didn't become a millionaire or whatever. So for me it's like, I mean, the soul leaves the body and it's like its actions are going to have a spiritual buoyancy, shall we say, a spiritual buoyancy. So where it goes next is going to be related to the spiritual buoyancy of the soul, shall we say. So there is no, you know, so my view would be, 
I mean, if you're talking Christianity, you call you know, there's heavenly realms and there's the other side of the realms, which aren't so same. So you see, so it's. Um, but yes, I do understand the question. But I you know, I you know, I, uh, I I ate like a pig. I got kidney failure. You know, but it seemed like I got away with it for a long time. I was quite obese as well. But I didn't get away with it that well. Anyway, so we digress. So, so I, I, so I attracted illnesses which were pretty severe and pretty chronic, you know. Um, but you can cancel. So, lesson fourteen, of course, in miracles. And here's the thing, you know. And I'm talking about experience. So there's things about belief systems. This is a load of nonsense. But the, you know, when people share their experience, it's different than just belief systems. So uh, lesson fourteen of a course in miracles states, uh, you can state this as an affirmation, God did not create cancer, so it is not real. Um, so, when you start to experience, what does that mean? I'll just try and let, when you start to get these mystical experiences of the present moment, you know, you do not experience any limitation. In, in, you know, as you start to live in the, in the limitless eternal presence, or the now, you know, you're, you no longer are holding those limiting ideas in consciousness any longer. So if you just let go of the limiting idea, like I picked up the limiting idea of kidney failure, which is a very limiting idea, I picked up the limiting idea from the collective of this world. It's not in the eternal. In God consciousness, in the pure God consciousness, the limiting ideas of humanity do not exist. Like kidney failure does not exist, gout does not exist, AIDS does not exist, cancer does not exist, all those things. So as they as those are eliminated from the ego consciousness, also the illnesses start to vanish as well, you see, as you let go of the repressed emotions. So just say I cancel my belief in kidney failure. I'll be sharing later on with the group how to let go of the repressed emotions around it. Yes? So were you saying that in the, I don't know what the word you used in, the, you did say the ultimate, but I think you mean something like that, in the ultimate, or what yes. did you say, in the absolute? In, in, in the infinite, the in eternal, infinite. yes. Yeah, in, the, in the there. Yeah. Uh, these things don't exist. That's right, yes. These limiting things don't exist, like, and the things you said that were, like, not yes. great things. But the, is it that there nothing exists? So, like, not even, you know, good things? Right? You're saying the cancer is and there's this, this, but what about, I don't know, something that, you know, love or friendship or... Okay, that's a great, that's a great question. Okay, so, the Course in Miracles... Um, I'd say all, all teachings. Uh, it's a teaching of surrender, surrendering everything, so that one can realize the truth. Yeah, realize the truth. So, I just very very quickly. I know I'm rambling on. Sorry, I'm rambling on a lot today. But um, okay, I also met a teacher of enlightenment, Muji, uh, and I know you've heard this a few times before. But he asked me, "What am I beyond my thoughts? What's witnessing the thoughts?" You know. What, you know, um, if I'm experiencing myself as something limited, well, there has to be something that's witnessing that which is not limited. So I thought I was my thoughts, but there's something behind that that is observing the thoughts. And then I had a white light spiritual experience. Uh, the white light spiritual experience is the exp can only be described as infinite light, infinite power, and infinite love beyond all description, beyond anything that could be experienced in this world. Okay? So... But for me, there, there are levels of consciousness. As you start letting go of identification with your thoughts, identification with the body, identification with limiting ideas, um, you start to get these more lim limitless experiences. It, usually with relatively advanced spiritual work, you start to experience oneness or, uh, or an eternal presence. And you no longer experience any reference of limitation as being self. Yeah. So, but you're, it's, it, there's experiencing the world, it's like witnessing, but there's no experience of limitlessness, of limits or, or time, or any sort of, there's no identification of the body or the thoughts. There's this limitless time of experiencing, and there's a witnessing, uh, a witnessing of experience, okay? So, but for me, even if you, if you, if you let that go, i.e. what's witnessing that, then you start to get more mystical experiences, like you go into like states of infinite light and love beyond description. So, as, as you, so it's like as you start peeling away the layers of the onion, you start getting these more powerful experiences of light and love. 
you know, it's like, I would say it's a bit like, uh, eventually you start to experience experiences of one, timeless oneness and presence, and eternal presence here. But if you let that go, then you're off into the light, into states of infinite love, uh, infinite love and power and light. And for me, what happens as this identification with the ego, as you start identifying with, you know, the top layers is this oneness and timelessness and infinite limitless presence. Beyond that, there's infinite light and power. And then as you come, as you identify more and more with the ego, the, the experience changes. So you start to feel more limited, more identified with the body and the thoughts. And so you go down and down, depending on the level of ego inflation. So for me, if you make a statement which is aligned with the absolute truth, then it's like you're affirming that in God's presence, in God's light, in God's truth, these things do not exist. And when you refute them, when you refute them, because if, if you're making a statement of absolute truth, like in truth, in God's light and love, cancer does not exist. You know, it's, just a, it's a limiting belief system of the collective nightmare of the ego, the illusory ideas of the collective within the ego. It doesn't exist in God consciousness. So, so of course it's saying God did, to make an affirmation, which I'd say was aligned with the absolute truth, God did not, God did not create cancer, so it's not real. You know, and I, I, because of my mystical experience, I know that in those infinite states of, of light and love, or even oneness, cancer is just a thought of the ego. And it had manifested, because I believed that thought. So, so, you state, so I said, when I had kidney failure, so I said, God did not create kidney failure. It is not real. God did not create it. It's just an illusory, a limited idea. Then, yes? Do you think sometimes it can be coming into agreement with the spirit? Like, if you agree with the spirit of, like, I'm selfish, then actually you need to sort of cut your or repent of your agreement with that spirit. So it could be like, you know, if you come into agreement with the thought that you have, you know, you could get cancer because you've got a lot of negativity. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're actually coming under the authority of something because you're in agreement with it. Yes. And, and to cut that authority, you can literally, like, we, we did an exercise where you actually you repent, you say, I repent of coming into agreement with that spirit, and I ask God to replace it with a spirit of, you know, it could be hope, or it could be, you know, a, you know success, or, you know, something else. So you, you actually, you come out of agreement, yes. and a legal, you know, covering. Yes. So you, you make a legally binding agreement with this thing. Yes. So you're coming out of that binding agreement. And therefore, the authority that it has over you, um, and you're asking God to replace that spirit with some other spirit. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd say. I mean, I, I would frame that. Um, yes. Uh, you know, I, I, the way I sort of see it is, it, these are like there are so many limiting belief systems within the collective of humanity, and and they tend to correlate at different levels of consciousness. Like addicts have certain kind of things they typically buy into. Criminals will buy into a collective set of limiting ideas. Um, saints will also buy into more saintly um, ideas and thoughts and inspirations. So, you know, I, I had purchased with my levels of guilt and shame from the collective, you know, like uh, kidney failure, gout, and that, that reflected the type of punishment that I required. So I can refute that. I can say I cancel that in God's name. And then I would I can return to high levels of consciousness. You know I can replace it with grace or love or something, or the infinite. I mean, we're, 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 here we're we're going for the mystics. So we want to I, I replace it that I'm I, this doesn't exist. I want to return to the infinite, limitless, timeless, eternal nature of God. And I refute buying into that and holding that as as real any longer. That makes, yeah. And what about, you were talking just a little earlier about, um, you know, we can be in that place or we can, like the, the absolute light. Yes. And then we can be in other place, which is the witnessing. Yes. And then we can be more ego identified. Yes. Okay. And I do feel like, especially even when I come here, sometimes I've been in the more 
kind of mystical places, I would yes. say. Or something really powerful has happened to me. Something's wrong here. Yeah. Mm. And then, and then what happens? Then I go away and I'm 